Hi, I'm Kim McQueen. I am editor and publisher of Onion River Press in Burlington. I'm uh, joined today by um, my wonderful um, author, Sefakor Komavu Pomayi, who has written this beautiful book that I had the uh, really the great honor to publish this year. Mm -hmm. Came out this year. Um, we were just talking about some of the harrowing moments <laughs> <laughs> we had, you know, getting this to press um, uh, in the midst of a threatened UPS strike, I think it was. <laughs> um, but everything went absolutely beautifully, mm -hmm. and this beautiful book showed up on time and uh, to a really welcoming, loving, beautiful audience at uh, Phoenix Bookstore uh, in, in Burlington on Bank Street. Um, so we thought we would take a few minutes today to talk about the book, introduce Sephikor to her, uh, her audience, her ever-growing audience of, uh, that reaches far and wide all over the world. Um, uh, Sephikor works for, you work for, I'm gonna address you now. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Sephikor, you work with the Vermont Center for Independent Living. Mm. Um, and we're gonna talk, uh, uh, I think, a lot about uh, your work with VCIL. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the book itself. Um, uh, but I, first, I'd like to start with just sort of a man on the street type of approach where I just ask you to please introduce yourself. Mm. Tell us why you're here and let's take it from there. Mm. Thank you, Kim. That's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> why am I here? Yeah. Um, so it's a loaded question. As I said, I'm here on so many missions, I would say, mm -hmm. yes, I'm on a mission. Um, most of the time I call the mission drivers ambassadorial mm -hmm. or, yeah, uh, assignments. So, uh, Sofako has gone through a lot of things uh, which actually build her up to now yes and give her the exposure to explore more so i'm here um to learn to share to educate you know um to impact uh, train those are some of the things i do practically advocate yes. um, yeah yeah so I would say, as you mentioned with VCIL, after my PhD, um, VCIL hired me to, as a full time, um, to coordinate programs for them, mm -hmm. or develop programs. So I work with VCIL as the independent living coordinator. Mm -hmm. And at that independent living coordinator, I I am the one in charge of the youth transition program across the state. Oh. And then... Can you talk a little bit about that program and what you do? Yeah. So, so um, the, youth, the youth transition program, I work across the state with all the students on IEP and 504 plan. Oh, throughout the state of Vermont? Yeah, the mm -hmm. whole. So I would say students between the ages of 14 to 26, mm -hmm. yeah they know me in, in terms of mm -hmm. um, if they have IEP or they have 504 plan. So any child with disability um, within that age group, I work with them closely. Mm -hmm. So I develop programs for them under self-advocacy projects or self-advocacy workshops. In other words, all my work with them is to build their self-esteem, mm -hmm. uh, build their confidence level, mm -hmm. and empower them to be their own um, advocates. In other words, um, I make it clear to them, one thing that we do, which is the philosophy of VCIL, is to make sure that we call a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. 
not a big spoon. We are, yeah. yes, that's how I term it in my language. Like, uh, uh, the philosophy of ECIL is to own the disability. Mm -hmm. So I train the students to own their disabilities and also to uh, be proud of that. In other words, my job, simple term, is to let my students know that disability is part of their identity. So in developing that um, part of them, I do it in so many ways. So I have so many workshops, I have so many programs developed under the Youth Transition Program. So for instance, one program is I meet a student on one on one on one, -on -one mm -hmm. um, most of the time, or I meet them as a school. So I have to work through the transition program coordinators or simply we call the TCs, the IEP coordinators and the teachers, you know, mm -hmm. I work with them. So we have a team called the ITA Agency Core Team Program. So that's the team uh, that I walk through before I get access to the students, right? Right. This program is actually, my program or my position is federally funded also mm -hmm. through- um, Through a grant. Through hireability. So we mm -hmm. work uh, collaboratively with them. So that is one program. There are other programs that I coordinate. Uh, there are some students that are so much vulnerable that they are not in the school system. Oh. Uh, yeah, the school. Uh, oh, children who are yeah, um, homeschooling. Are homeschooled. Yeah. So I work with them also on one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. uh, also. I also have a program called um, Campus Connection. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we talked about that earlier. Yeah. Campus Connection is where I see a huge gap of research not reflecting on the student or on the community or on the people with disabilities in the community. That is connecting research at a higher uh, uh, level in terms of uh, education and not really connecting it, the research work connected to the people. For, so for instance, any student who is in transition program or who I know uh, working towards self-advocacy and making sure that uh, we empower them with the policies, like the ADA. Nobody teaches ADA in the classroom, right? Right. But that right, is my right. work. I, I teach them the policy that give them the power. Like I make sure that they have the tools that when you are talking about, let's say, asking for reasonable accommodation, how do you know that? I I, I lead them through the process. Oh, I lead them see. through trainings to let them know that some people fought the fight of activism. Right. Uh, to get, let's say, 504, who did I trust Judy Human, you know, led the, the people to the capital and all those stuff. I, I work with them. And when they get to college level, you know, there are some deceptions. I would say it's deceptions because um, some parents tell their children that when you grow up, uh, when you grow up, you grow out of the disability. In other words, as much as you get to college level, when you have epilepsy, mm -hmm. um, let me use any invisible disability. Uh -huh. Yeah, epilepsy or dyslexia or anything, you are going to grow out of it. No. You can grow, like, it's an assumption on the part of yeah. the parent or yeah, the... some, some, they believe that... that they'll just be able to function as an adult yeah, so, and somehow transcend yeah, the disability. So, so because they don't want their children to fall into that category of the small group, you know, yeah, disability yeah. which yeah. is marginalized. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so parents yes. just try to pretend or to cover up. And that is, you can imagine uh, children growing to that level. As much as they get to college level, they are afraid to be who they are. Mm -hmm. They don't. They, they are expecting to have a different lifestyle, which is not true. And yeah. so the denial stage of our children have been so huge when they get to college level, they are lost in the system. Mm -hmm. Who has time for students at college level uh, to be walking you through your personal skills or life right. skills? No. Right, so right. I work with them closely to build that capacity mm -hmm. before they get there. And College Connection connects them to, for instance, we have a program in UVM where I lecture as an agent. Yes. Um, the Campus Connection program, which I co-facilitate with one professor, Luby, in UVM, uh, Culture of Disability course. Yeah. Uh, that course, when anybody takes that course, we walk the person through, I walk the person through personally to 
realize their own potential in terms of research focus, what they want to change in the system. In other words, what do they want to change which they couldn't change when they were young or during their middle school, high school issues, now that they have understood what wow. is disability and they connect it to their bigger vision of major yeah. as much as they walk for, uh, forward uh, in their education. Another program that I coordinate uh, with uh, other departments across is the Youth Advocacy Council program. Mm. So in this, as I work with them on one-on-one, I develop uh, that close connection with them. So the fact is, if you know who you are now and you are proud of your uh, identity, uh, disability being one part of it that you can be able to just be bold to share openly if necessary and yeah. also uh, work with that strength, that means you can be able to talk about yourself, right? So mm -hmm. all uh, self-advocacy is knowing who you are, yes. knowing what you want, how to ask for it, whom to ask, yeah. yes, you know? So when you build all those things, like when you have that capacity, then you are likely to be able to vouch for yourself and vouch for another person. Mm -hmm. So I lead them to the state level, which they can um, talk about their own and then blend it with others. In other words, when they get to state level, yeah. we, they do systems advocacy. I see. Yeah. Yes. So Youth Advocacy Council, I coordinate that, I facilitate that, co-facilitate that with CARA from Higher Ability. Mm -hmm. And that is the place that we groom the student to lead them to the Montpelier State House. Well, <laughs> yes, we lead them. They, when they request that they want to go there or meet Governor Scott, anybody, yeah. that is how systems advocacy leads to them that they talk on behalf of the other people with disabilities yeah. across the state. Yeah. So yeah. that is um, what I do. <laughs> Why am I here with VCIL? Yeah. I, I coordinate that program with connection with um, UVM where um, they take some of the courses that they can take and then connect to their major or do something that they want to do in life in future. That's a, such a beautiful answer to my question. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I, I've, um, of course, um, was uh, uh, really honored to serve as uh, an editor um, uh, on this book. And uh, it's about this concept of self-advocacy, that you really uh, tell the story from your own perspective, what self-advocacy means to you and how you have come to define it for yourself and your community as your community grows to include all of Ghana and that <clears throat> you landed in Vermont and are really transforming the landscape mm -hmm. for all who come after you um, here in the state. And, and it, it seems to me you've really done it through that focus on self-advocacy. So your description of how you live it in your everyday life is, um, it's really cool. And thank I you. thank you for sharing it. Thank you. Um, I would love to know I don't want to, I want to stop putting words in your mouth right now and ask you what motivates you from hmm. your definition of that. Hmm. Yeah. So what motivates me to self advocate? I would say that I think it starts from home. Yeah. I will pick it up from there. Yeah. So self advocacy has to do with First of all, self-realization, mm -hmm. yeah, who you are. And as much as this category of people are concerned, um, people think that we are in the small group, which is not true, mm. which is not true because we are in the bigger group. Rather, why am I saying that? Because it's a, a cross-section. It's not a minority. No, it's not a minority. Disability has nothing to do with minority. But the ableists put structures in place to make it feel um, separated. But that is one thing that uh, I would say that motivates me to decode what disability actually means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Yeah. So for me, as you know, everything is in this book, but one thing that I know very well is as much as disability is concerned, and that's why this book is not for only students, it's for everyone, because whether you are poor or rich, whether you are black or white, young or old, what race or class or age or whatever um, categories that we have, any stratifications, demarcations we lay down, disability is the pivot, mm. yes, that we are all revolving around. So that for me, uh, it's one area that I realize that I have to put this out. I have to just make it very simple for a mother at home to know that disability is part of humanity. As I say, um, the fact that you have to understand from that concept of humanity, the humanity part of it that I am because you are, mm. and whatever you have, I have it, which um, originally from Ubuntu, meaning whatever affects me affects you. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. So when you talk about what really motivates my self-advocacy, I started telling you that it started from home, yeah. from my mom. Yeah. And this book tells everyone how they can do it right. from their bedroom. You remember chapter four, the mirror, right? right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it's, a, it's very strong. There is no way you can give something that you don't have. Mm. And self-advocacy has to do with self-realization. And when you discover yourself yeah. and you know who you are, even as the environment around you tells you, everything around you tells you that you are evil child, mm -hmm. cursed object, useless, unproductive, mm -hmm. all those negative things. So far as you know yourself from home, whom you know, what has been instilled on, in you from your mental faculty in, in the super obloganta, you know who you are, nothing can take that out from you. <sighs> and from my side, I was groomed up by my mom who was a very stout Christian. So I grew up with my self-advocacy values to be a very strong Christian groom in the word of God, mm. and also making sure that nobody uses anything to uh, devalue me. Uh -huh. right. Yes, yes, and I will say that um, as much as I know that people believe in so many things or different things, that, for me, it's one area that I draw my energy from in terms of my self-advocacy. As much as I was groomed, that's why everybody needs to have that from their own room, I, like from the bedroom, you know, yeah. so that they can go out and do what they have to do. Yeah. Because I call it the garbages or the garbage piled up outside there are huge. <laughs> yes. They are right. huge. Take care of what you can take care of exactly. first before you step out the door. Exactly. So yeah. when I work with the children or the youth, those are the things that I work with them closely. Yeah. But you know what is so interesting? When you are a mother and you tell your child at home that don't worry, as much as you grow, you will be okay. You will be this. You know how we cuddle our babies. You don't want the child to know that, oh, what you have now is disability mm -hmm. and somebody also has it or everybody has it and even though they don't show it out uh, show, show it outside or visibly everybody has it internally invisible um, and those children come to me imagine the contrast mm -hmm. they come to me and I am like hey if you have ADHD or dyslexia it is called disability and they're like what <laughs> no, my mommy said I'm just differently able. Oh, yeah. I don't have a disability. Then I take them to yes. the law. What does the ADA say, or what is the definition of disability in the ADA? Oh. That is the policy part of me. Mm -hmm. So as much as I connect policy to practices on the ground, I use it to do my advocacy mm -hmm. because I know what the law says and what it says to be uh, broken down at times by some of the laws also, but with that particular tuition at home, and then you coming to school, and everybody is taunting you, everybody is making you feel that you are the most useless person because the school system is not built 
for people with disabilities. It's like it's a it was afterthought, right? Right. So when you know that you have that denial stage at home, you don't have something that you have. That it's very uh, a very shaky ground for children, mm -hmm. and then they come and tell me that my parents said this. I said, okay, but this is what the law says. Right. Yeah, then right, I give right. them the tools that they need. Yeah. I have so many tools that I work with depending on the type of disabilities that they have. Sure. So uh, self-advocacy and motivation must come from home. Right. And actually, when I have this particular vision of writing this book, my motivation was really about to change the Na the negative narratives, mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. negative narratives that we have around disability. I want to, I'm holding the book rather awkwardly because I don't want to forget to ask you to, to talk to us a little bit about the title and how you arrived at it. I'm, um, uh, I'm like, I know the story, but uh, I, I want you to tell um, viewers so, because it's cool. <laughs> I'm able, a woman's advice for disability change agents. This title went through so many metamorphoses mm. or changes, I would say, just because um, as somebody working um, both on the ground and at the top, in other ways, mm -hmm. with students um, lower age, and as much as I lecture at UVM and St. Michael's, I see that um, I want to connect research to policy and practices, right? So initially, my title that I have for this book <laughs> were very much long and <laughs> focusing on <laughs> were very like, like focusing on academics, you know. Right. Yeah. Long uh, titles and long ti colons with other contemporary long what 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 and da da da. This <laughs> one day and my son woke up and he was like, "Mama, why don't you just make this title simple? I'm able. People think that you can't do anything." So when you say I'm able, it just makes it simple. You are able, you do everything. And I'm like, that's yeah. the title. <laughs> yes, because, and one thing that I see is I'm able, it's actually not me. When you have this book in your hand, as you know, every chapter has questions. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I have people telling me that they are learning, doing their own education in their own rooms. That is my satisfaction. It's not about a student, it's not about a teacher, it's about everybody. Whether you're a social worker, please, a, a, a medical practitioner, whatever work you are doing, parents, caregiver, student with disability, everybody, you have the learning starting from I'm able. When you are able to tell yourself that I'm able, and you go to this book and read one chapter a day and take something from it, you will see that whatever you have, because as you know, I touch base on so many things. I it's a wonderful book. It's both personal yeah. and it's and it's um, it's academic in the sense that it's it's your voice and you have a a, a teacher's voice mm -hmm. and a, a, a guide's voice and it and it reaches out past Vermont mm -hmm. all the way to Ghana and comes back. Yeah. So, so it's all and it's all in the book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So talking about I'm able, I have this vision of making disability. As an ambassador, I'm on a mission, I told you from the beginning, that yeah. disability to come closer to everyone. That is why in UVM, I have this course called Global Disability Studies that everybody should take from across the world, wherever they are. Whether a UVM student or not? No, yeah, wherever you are, you can read it <laughs> because it's a synchronous uh, course, which actually won uh, one of the best awards recently, uh, the pre log Award for me to be the best asynchronous uh, Teach a uh, course teacher. So my focus was yeah. I'm able is actually for all of us that yeah. when you possess it, you can be able to do so many things on your own, despite the fact that you don't have a visible disability. Because I said everybody has disability. So yeah, yeah. And with that focus, I'm able is traveling long. Mm -hmm. As much as global disability studies are concerned, presently University of um, Cape Coast. Uh, I'm able to work closely with them on a different level as the founder and CEO of uh, EEPD Africa that is enlightening and empowering I, people. 
IEPD Africa. Enlightening and empowering people with disabilities in Africa. Got it. That is EEPD Africa. Okay. That's my organization uh, in Ghana. So I'm working with them to actually uh, have what we call disability center in Ghana, like what we have in the U in UVM or in the US system, every university has disability center. Yes. Yes. So I have been able to work with them or EEPD has been able to work with University of UVM, University of Minnesota, and University of Cape Coast in Ghana mm -hmm. to establish uh, what we call disability center, just as we have CDCI in UVM. Yes. Yeah, so we are having that right now at UCC, which my organization coordinated. And an interesting piece is we have a, call, a program now called International uh, Disability Studies Program. Mm -hmm. And that, that program, Global Disability Studies, is one of the prerequisite requirements. That's Very students. nice. Yes. <laughs> and that program is not for only students. We targeted the whole community, yeah. whether you are hotel manager, That's whether fantastic. you are, yeah, whatever job you are doing, uh, you think that you don't have a disability. Right. We want you to just join that course and then um, educate yourself. And I'm able, it's one thing that will help you. So I'm able, it's um, a simple way of claiming your own disability before it occurs. In other words, for the, to avoid the fear of the unknown. Right. Yeah, so when you start right. diving deep into you this really book. We understand it. Yes. Yeah. When you start diving deep into this book, you will know that you are able of doing anything. Yeah. Especially if you have that training from home and you know the foundation of that training. Mm -hmm. That is all that you need to survive. Whether somebody tells you that you are useless, whether somebody tells you that you can't be productive, whether somebody trashes you that you can't be anything, uh, you, you are not worthy of anything, you just know that you have once read, I'm able, <laughs> and you can move forward. So Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's uh, yeah, and once you read it, you, um, it's, you're armed to yeah. really... Yeah. Do anything. And I can see the future uh, for Amabel moving from um, country to country, mm -hmm. co continent to continent, because uh, one major vision that I have is making sure that everybody is well aware of the type of disabilities that they have, mm -hmm. and then they can embrace that and um, alongside of whatever they're doing. Exactly. And, as, and I think, I would imagine the younger that you are, the more uh, facility you'll have with developing this resilience. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. anybody of any age can take this course or read this book or just simply have a conversation with yourself or someone from the um, Vermont Center for Independent Living or for that matter, the Disability Studies uh, Center at UVM um, and get up to speed no matter where you are in life, no matter what kind of childhood you have and no, what, no matter what kind of disability you have or how much you may know about it, you can start with your work mm -hmm. and grow from there. I'm so, so pleased to have been able I to. I just have a very simple editor. question for you. Now you okay, enter. Get <laughs> All right, we got like 30 seconds. I know. So, what is your experience with me publishing this book? Oh, thank you. You turned the tables. Um, <laughs> I'm just curious. I learned so much from working on this book, from my first conversation with you on the phone, when I was um, really just learning how to be efficient and effective in my role as editor and publisher at New River Press. And so even as I was making plans with you, boy, I doubted a little bit whether I would be able to make this the book the best it could be. Um, but we worked together, and I think we did it. Yeah, did it. So that's that's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Yes, yes, I feel the same way, too. The, the feeling is mutual. Thank you so much. Thanks. I really enjoy working with you. Thank you. Thank you.